Well, hi, it's Tom. You know, the, the word that probably has most characterized the current um, American presidential um, nomination season uh, has been change. And, you know, it got me thinking uh, the other night, had dinner with a friend of mine, uh, and she was saying that, you know, uh, uh, he, she was talking about about Barack Obama, and she said, "You know, people are saying that that Obama is talking about change, but he's not being very specific, and that um, that made people uneasy." And she said, "Don't people know about change?" <laughs> and it was a funny statement because uh, you know I I I think that um, my friend really hit on something pretty important which is that we have uh, within our, our minds and our imagination ideas about how leaders uh, create, <laughs> create change. You hear that phrase, leaders create change? We, we believe that to be a leader means to have a, um, let's use all the buzzwords, to have a vision which then gets rolled out to whatever the system is that the leader is trying to change and that the system then um, implements, executes the, sorry, the, um, uh, the change that the leader has envisioned. And that's the, that's pretty much the the model that m most of us if not all of us have grown up with of change well we live in a new time now i know that sounds you know like such a cliche and like such a what do you mean we live in a new time well this is what i mean we now live in a time when the potential for connecting the system that we're working in with itself via all of these um, simple yet profound communication uh, technologies and methods, that the potential for connecting the system with itself is now greater than it's ever been in the past. And so, one way of thinking about change today is thinking that what leaders need to do is to enable the system to connect with itself and engage in work, conversation, activity, whatever it is that the system is uh, designed to enable, um, to work with itself to create new structures, change. Now, the direction that those structures take and that the change takes then is certainly something that lives within the system's um, mission, its definition of itself, its, you know, its reason for being, why it exists. And so many leaders are finding that an open source approach to change as opposed uh, 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 and uh, in in line with the open force open source approach to many other things is yielding tremendous results the kinds of 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 things that could never have been accomplished by a group of people sitting in a room trying to figure out a mission and then rolling it out for an organization to um, execute. Uh, now, whether or not Barack Obama, if he were to be elected president, would be able to actually bring that kind of thinking to the presidency, he is the only candidate who has even the slightest idea about that approach 
to governing. When you listen closely and read the kinds of things that Obama has in mind, he is talking about putting the citizens of the country in connection with one another through these kinds of technologies and enabling a lot of open source thinking about the kinds of problems that we currently have found to be intractable using previous means of solving them. What kinds of problems? Well, healthcare system, uh, infrastructure investment, um, uh, the, the tax system. I mean, there are so many, um, there are so many problems that for the last 40 years we have said must be solved that have not been solved that it's amazing to me that there are people who are willing once again to take another turn around the wheel of trying to solve them in the same ways that other people have tried to solve them in the past. What makes us believe that the next president, using the same kinds of approaches that the last presidents have used, is going to be able to be any more effective? at getting things done. I, I don't understand that logic. It seems to me that we need to try something different because what we've been doing has not been up to the task of solving the kinds of problems that we are now facing. And, you know, does that mean that our system is unable to solve them? I don't think so. I think what it means is that the way we have been executing our system, our democratic system, has not provided us with enough engagement by the people who are living within it to make a difference. Um, you know, most of us, if we vote every four years or every two years in, you know, congressional elections, that's it. That's the only involvement we ever have. We never talk to a politician. We never engage with politicians. We don't, we don't do anything. We elect them, we send them on their way, we watch them go through the same things that they've been doing all of our lives, and then we complain when they fail. I think we have to try to embrace a new model of change, which is in keeping with the model of change that we're seeing in every other kind of system today. Every business, Look at what's happened with the way businesses are engaging in the kind of connective conversations that they're now having. The most successful ones are using every possible means to engage their system, engage their employees, engage their ecosystem, including their customers and their suppliers in conversations about how to make things work how to innovate, how to change. Why we can't apply that kind of thinking to government is beyond me. But I think if we're gonna have a chance to do anything, we're going to have to embrace a new approach to change itself if we're gonna have a chance. So um, thanks to my friend Connie for that great bit of insight and uh, I'll see you guys again soon. Take care.